women, with all due respect, I, I'm not misogynistic when I say this. I'm not some condescending man. Listen, man, all these women out here that are singing are trying to convince everybody in the world that they hate men, they don't need a man, they don't want a man, they don't desire a man, and that they, 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 they can do bad all by themselves. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to go home. Here's the memo. And I want the words. Do me a favor. Editor, whoever the editor, what's your editor name? Well, CJ Company handles that. CJ Okay, Gaines. okay, that, that sounds fancy. Okay, okay, so, so, so look, whoever your editor is, I want you to put the bouncing ball under this, okay? Here's a memo to all of the beautiful women in the world, whether you've been celebrate five, 10 years, rather you have seen other women go through divorces, or you've been through a divorce yourself. Here's the bouncing ball that I want them to add in post-production. Nobody needs to, to go home to a poodle and a vibrator. Nobody needs to be alone. Nobody should be alone. This concept of being alone is bullshit because most of your favorite female singers that are out here singing this song are going home to their man, their fiance, or their husband. Rather you know it or not, that's on you. You believe that toxic ass shit, that's why you're filling up the arenas with it. Nobody wants to be alone, sir. No man, this is biblical companionship. Look it up, non-biblical people. <laughs> so I was not devastated when my divorce ended because I wanted someone or something to be with me. I got married because I wanted to do it for the rest of my life. Because I loved the way I felt and what I had in my marriage and my family. It became a world within a world within a world. And it was a world that I had never experienced prior to that. Honeymoon, love, beauty, magic, everything, my yeah. brother. Fucking up there with the Care Bears. <laughs> Floating, bruh. My God. Some shit that... It was everything you, everything that you thought it would be. I'm saying some shit right now that's so foreign. Like, what, 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 what is it? If you get rid of the vibrator and the poodle, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay. Marriage. Some other, other, other shit, my brother. Oh, my. Don't get it fucked up. But she could leave me all she wants. I was devastated and crushed. Specifically, I let God down. You see, I didn't promise her anything. But you can't but you can't make somebody stay where they don't want to be. Father God, I love you and I trust you. Yeah. Through thick and thin. Sickness and health for better, for worse, till death do us part, along with all the other words. That's not God's opinion. That is the word of God. I gave God my word. And neither one of us are dead. So where the fuck are you at? See, I'm thinking that what's going to happen? Karma. What's go she left me. Yes. And this is not a narcissist saying you should have stayed with somebody that you didn't want to stay with, irregardless of being married or not. That's that toxic ass narrative for all of that community. You think your grandparents are celebrating 50 years of marriage because your grandfather never cheated on her, nigga? Stop playing. When your grandmama gonna tell you, grandbaby, how many times your grandfather was a rolling stone, smashing everything in the neighborhood? This was prior to social media. We gonna celebrate 60 years of marriage and not tell people how you were able to get through all of that? Your wife was down to 80 pounds after she had to go through chemotherapy and all of those random sicknesses. You stayed. Money up, money down. You stayed. Are we loyal? Are we loyal to the net worth? Motherfucker, because the net worth is going to change. I'm going to be up. I'm going to be down. 
That, that, that doesn't change what we promised God. So you got to understand what you don't understand for the people watching. Now, the married folks at home, hallelujah, they're going to be screaming and hooping and hollering because they know it ain't easy to be married. Nope. And they also understand the magic and the beauty of marriage in itself. And I never understood that until Rev Run became my best friend. I had never consistently, key word, boys and girls, I had never consistently ever been around a married man prior to Rev Run to understand what marriage, wife, family, it ain't arguing. It's how do you argue? Mm -hmm. You see? That's, that's the difference. Everybody gonna argue. With two random people that don't know each other, your family ain't got nothing to do with my family. Your triggers ain't got nothing to do with my family. Your upbringing ain't got nothing to do with We hope and we pray that a lot of who we are align. But when they don't, we're going to argue about it. The question is, how are you arguing? What are you arguing about? How are you arguing? Is the question. And married folks understand we've been married for five years. Let me just ask you an example. Because I, I love to ask questions sometimes sure. before I make a point. If you drove the same car without putting gas in it, doing an oil change, ever getting the carburetor, or anything that has to do with your car for five straight years, what would happen? Well, I'm gonna run out of gas before that five years, so I ain't gonna be able to go. But okay. obviously you have to do certain things. Let's, well, say, let's say electric car. Yeah. That, that, that gets well, you gotta re- get it let's, let's go. Yeah. Let's go 2025, yeah. right? If you have an electric car mm-hmm. that gets recharged without you ever having to plug up, Will you be able to be in this physical car for five straight years without getting something done? No. You got to get tires changed. You got to get the brake pads, right? Plugs, yeah. Okay, that's what marriage is. It is a work in progress. And everybody on Instagram, what's fucked up is y'all are robbing people of knowing how challenging marriages are. Mm. Because you ain't uploading the challenges. You're just uploading all the glossy, happy shit. Yeah. You want to be couples goals. Be couples goals all you want. Because people are still going to be inspired by you, even if they know how challenging your marriage has been. But most of the people will never know. I ain't talked to my wife in three weeks because we keep arguing about this shit and I'm fucking exhausted. And yeah, we live in the same house, but she over there and I'm over there. We don't eat together, we don't talk together, we ain't touch each other, we ain't flirt, we ain't together, we ain't this and that. That ain't me, I'm talking about people yeah. will never upload that. So what they upload is when they finally start getting along again. So that makes the whole world believe the lie. They've been happy all this time. The lie is more important than people telling the truth. Now, the truth is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Nobody is as open as me. You know, this is why my manager don't like doing interviews like this, because, oh shit. You gonna be too honest. I'm I'm always, you know? That's why why I I do what I do, I post the way I post, I live my life. You can can Google it for, for the lifetime of you. I have always been a man who prides himself in walking, living, and breathing, not the truth. The truth is your perception of what the truth is, my truth. I will never play victim. I will never lie. I will never make sure that you like me versus like her or like them because they're gonna steal the like, they're gonna like who they like, goofy ass nigga. <laughs> mm-hmm. You could write the longest caption in the world, they're gonna still fuck with who they fuck with. You'll never be able to get your worst enemy to ever not be an enemy. You can have veins coming out your neck, the biggest voice ever. They ain't fucking with you, bro. Are you okay with that? And if you want everybody to like you, Shannon, be ice cream. (laughs) I don't know too many niggas who got a problem with ice cream. I know they trying to go dairy. They trying to go eco-friendly on the ice cream. But nigga, ain't nothing like some motherfucker... uh, <laughs> dairy in the ice cream. You you mentioned <laughs> that when you got married, you like this is forever. You made a promise before God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When your divo- when your marriage ended, 
Was that the most pain you'd ever felt? Yes, because nobody has ever mattered. And I've never allowed anyone to matter as much as my marriage mattered. Mm -hmm. I've also, I've also never gave anyone so much of myself ever. And I know you hear a lot of women say that, but us as men, I want to just, uh, oh, this is going to be controversial, but I have to say it. Uh, to all the ladies, you've been, you've been ready to get married since elementary. Us as men, our penis belongs to everybody. <laughs> And that's what we get love for. That's what we get respect for. That's what the homies love you in the locker room for. Because we out here going big. And, and our numbers that we putting up on the board and who we smashing and how many we smashing, how often we smashing and how many we smashing at one time, we get love for that. Women call women hoes. We ain't got to do it. When you overly promiscuous, women attack women. I ain't finna attack you because you knocked down five last week because you hot in these Shannon Sharp streets. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you mean? <laughs> I see black ass Ocho sitting over here. That's my nigga right there. Ocho been hot in these motherfucking streets just like me. Nigga, dark skin community. Knocking them down. Yeah. And I'm sure we didn't knock down a couple of them that we knew together. That's what I'm talking about. How you losing sleep over what another man out here doing? That 50-year-old nigga still in the club for a reason. He ain't done. He trying to knock him down. He trying to knock down every bad bitch on human feet. <laughs> That's the narrative. Now, y'all are ready to get married because you've been sold on the dream. You've been sold on the fantasy. You've been sold on the white picket fence and the horse and finding your man's man and riding to the motherfucker's sunset. That is the fantasy. That is the Disney picture. Find any real men as a kid is sitting up watching Cinderella movies. No fucking Cinderella movie on my TV when I was in the hood, nigga. Shit. Which means I was robbed of the fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no Prince Charming on my TV. I wasn't watching them cartoons. I'm watching He-Man. <laughs> we'll get you out on this co-parenting. How difficult is it to Wait, hold on. If we about to wrap up. Yeah. I want to talk I'll, about beautiful pain. Okay, well, let's talk about it then. Yeah, please. Let me get beautiful to the, pain with all these old niggas y'all got watching this show, they going to have to buy this grown-ass album. You, you got the cover? You want to get the cover? Uh, what happened? No, yeah, you oh, get praise cover, God. Right? Yeah, we're going to get into that. Let's go beautiful pain on them. Thank you, my brother. See, that's my childhood homie from eight years old right yeah. there. Clutch. What's up, Yada? No, you want to show it? Yeah. Okay, my boy Kenyatta, yeah. man, Kenyatta. No, we'll, I want, we'll talk about okay. it. Okay. Uh, you know, edit this out, okay? <laughs> want to talk about it, and then I'm going to make it seem like I'm putting the first physical copy of my album in your hand. Okay. Now, don't show the back. Okay. Because it's a mock-up. Okay. And then I want you to also do me a... You would bless my life, because I'm independent, so all this shit matters, okay? Yeah. Shay Shay do you. numbers. We, we do crazy numbers. Shay Shay do numbers. Yeah. Okay, so when I give you this, my brother, uh, here's your first movie role for me. I'm going to okay. give you this, yeah. and then I want you to not show the back because that okay. don't say Tyrese or nothing on it, and then and then I'm going to say, do me a favor, man. Grab grab the album, pull it out, and then give me a, a beautiful reaction because, you know, that's that's that is, the that's double red. Album, I've never right? seen it's, that It's beautiful. So I'm, I'm releasing this double vinyl produced by David Foster. Which is the legend, David Foster? The fucking David Foster, yeah. So, so... Uh, David Foster is 20 songs total. It's about love, life, divorce, and all the above. So I just, if we can, if we tight for time, I just wanna, I just wanna wrap this all up. Yeah. Talking about the most important album I've ever done in my life, especially pivoting off of the marital conversation mm -hmm. yes. we just had. So, we good? Anybody wanna walk out? Y'all okay? Okay. All right. So, so. Uh, I, I, we're going to go edit. Mr. Editor, we're going to pick up from a 3 two, one so I can close out my marital thought and the whole Cinderella thing. I want to yeah. close that out, and then I want to pivot into the that beautiful would, pain comedy, okay. if you don't mind. Uh, no problem. Especially if they want to wrap me up. I'm going to wrap this up and sell these That's motherfucking That's on you. We, records, we, we, you do, we do it. Oh, we're going we to use these numbers. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so um, truth is nobody should be alone. And I think <laughs> what is so confusing about this, this, this concept, and <laughs> oh God, 
Oh, man. Oh, this is going to be so bad, Shakes. Oh, God. This is, this, is, this is so bad, but it's true. You wasn't healed before you got married. Mm. You wasn't healed before your boyfriend, before your girlfriend. You wasn't healed before you got engaged. You're not healed even if you've been married for 20 years. How many times has your wife wiped your tears? Married men. How many times has your wife wiped your tears when you start talking about your childhood traumas? Why are you married if you're not supposed to be married until you're healed? Do yourself a favor and, and do some therapy and understand that it's not in everybody's cards to be alone. Don't independence your way into loneliness. And because you're alone doesn't mean you're lonely. Right. Because people do really well about themselves. I love being alone. I love spending time alone. When it comes to me having some in my life, I understand specifically the value in companionship. That man that's at your job flirting with you every day, why you won't let him take you to lunch and dinner? That don't mean you got to give him some pussy. <laughs> You're an adult. Right. You know how to say no. A man can be in hot pursuit of you for six months before you finally have sex with him because that's what adults do, right? We're, we're adults. So I, as a man who had been out dirt diggler, living my best life, <laughs> like most men, <laughs> okay, we are not ready to get married. Not all. That, I don't want to generalize. Women are always ready to get married. They've been ready to get married since Cinderella. Us as men are not ready to get married, and nothing about the concept of us getting married is introduced to any of us because that's not our narrative, that's not our dialogue, that's not the sensitivities in and around the locker room talk, the R&B talk, the hip-hop talk. It's knock them down every single day, knock them down, knock them down. Red Run, Jay-Z, they all normalized hip-hop. Marriage, introduced it. Fat Joe, keep going. It's, there's, a, there's a few, DJ Khaled. Mm -hmm. They've all normalized the energy in and around being a hip hop rapper and literally being about family and marriage. I wanna say, I could be wrong, but Rev Rum was one of the first. Yes. Okay? Long before we fell in love with Bill Cosby, I'm not talking about what he's accused of or what he dealt with or dealing with, Rev Run slapped that collar on and he said to the whole world, this is what real love looks like. Not the records I sold, not the hip hop, and not the arenas I'm selling out. And not how much I mean to you rappers. True wealth is this right here. Jay-Z understands that. Beyonce understands that. That's what I am proud to say I attempted and I went all out. So everything about my marriage ending, it was devastating for me because like most men, we go above and beyond to keep living our best life and partially committing to everything and everybody. We're giving it all away. Right. And everything about the love and the props that we get from giving it all away is us being men. Like, you can't be mad at me that me and all my niggas normalize getting this pussy. <laughs> you can't be mad at me that we up in here giving each other high fives and talking about, you know, it, 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 and the thing is, sometimes we can get jealous, right? Yeah. But for the most part, if me and you knock down the same cheerleader and we playing on the same team, nigga, we gonna talk about it. Nigga, this she. Yeah, cheerleaders was off limits to us. We couldn't mess with the cheerleaders. Shannon, if you don't get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm just saying we could, we could. Diaries, hey, I'm just saying. Wait, hold on. We are past the, what is the, uh... Statue of Limitations. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, you better bring that motherfucking glass over and stop playing with me. <laughs> cheerleaders is off limits. Who the fuck is he talking to? I tell you, boy, I tell you, politically correct was a person in a great t-shirt. God damn. We are past the statute of limitation. No one is hiring you to play on any teams, nigga. You're going to be all right. <laughs> I know you and Ocho that knocked down a couple of nah, I'm, I'm way older than Ocho. <laughs> Ocho about to get mad, so, you know, 
Oh, I'm talking about Ocho that. Pass. I'm not talking about his current, all right? Yeah. I'm talking about yeah. it ain't no way in hell, nigga. Nah, we out here not nah. knocking down them cheerleaders. When you yeah. looking at them leg muscles every day, nigga, the fuck you talking about? <laughs> Kill anyway, the, 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 the thing is, us as men, they say men are for men, women for all this old different, you know. Marvin Listen, Venus. man, truth be told, the reason why, hear me, thank you, Jesus. The reason why, in my opinion, this is my truth. The reason why everything about us getting married is always so much harder if it comes to an end is because most of us as men, we are wired to never do that. They've been ready to do it since they was two, bruh. <laughs> we are wired to never commit. <laughs> that, that's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You are with a man you are married to a man right now who might not be thinking about you when he has sex with you. Damn. Because we are wired to be thinking about all of them. What if she ain't thinking about all, him? What happened? What if she ain't thinking about him? I'm sure she ain't. Mm. Especially if the nigga wears size three. <laughs> Especially if the nigga wears size three. Uh, listen, Tyree, you I, got to slide. You slumped out of the no, chill no, 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 no. Listen, man. Listen, man. I'm not going to put this all on the man. I'm just letting you know that we are wired very, very differently, my brother. We're very different. And so me getting married, I had to push through a lot as a man. Mm -hmm. Like most men, we are married. And we are literally in disbelief that we made that decision. Yeah. Unless you grew up in a house where you're around somebody like me, like Rev Run. Right. Where they've normalized the talk, the energy, the dialogue, and the vibrations of this is what you want to be, and this is what you ultimately want to get to. Yeah. That is not normal, my brother. Most of us are single. Most of us grew up in single household with single mothers and single, single, single. So where does commitment, companionship, engagement, and marriage come in. Single mother, single this, single that, singular, solo, flying alone, me, my, and then you are spreading yourself out to everything and everybody. So at the end of the day, yes, beautiful pain. Let me get the album. Let me see the album. Oh. Show the cover. What if I told you this is the first physical copy? I would love, that, that's unbelievable that it's on Club Shay Shay. I got the first physical copy. It's the first copy. Let me say it. Let me, oh, let, me, let, me, let me hold it. Let me do it. I just gave you my heart, okay? That's my heart in that album. Look at this. Can y'all see this? Nah, but this is what makes it special. Look at this. Oh. Mm. Mm. You see that cover? You see that cover? I see a flower. I see a heart that's shattered, beautifully broken, in a in a thousand pieces. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. What's on this album? That's what happens when a man finally says yes. This is what happens when a woman finally says yes. Says yes to marriage. Says yes to commitment. Says yes to taking the full journey. Says yes to kids. That album has twenty songs on it. All of the vulnerabilities. All of the things that most men are very uncomfortable with singing about, talking about. See, they attack us for not speaking and not communicating. And then when you do talk, you get attacked for that too. I put it all on that album. We got songs on that album where I'm posing questions like, I know you filed for divorce. I know I'm still over here fucked up about it because the healing journey is never ending. If Bishop T.D. Jakes so knows Jesus Christ, he should be in heaven by now. We are all still in the process of figuring it out. You can quote 500 scriptures from the Bible, but if you know Jesus better than Jesus, then you might as well go on home. <laughs> it is a never ending journey to heal. It is a never ending journey to keep pushing through the stuff and hoping that you can find a smile at the end of that rainbow. That is the most important thing I've ever done. And I can tell you right now, I finished it. It's coming out on Friday, August 30th. I'm dropping this album on the same day that I'm dropping uh, 1992, the movie. And 
I have never done, this is me, I've never done anything more important in my life. Like, I can't believe it's mine. Can't believe these are my feelings, my sentiments, my vulnerabilities. If you ask me, I have, where's my red beanie at? Can somebody get my red beanie? Because I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to go ahead and remind y'all. So first of all, if y'all asking why I got on a red beanie, black and gold, my fucker, zoom in on that right there. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the swag is up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, black folks got to coordinate. Anyway, so I was saying that if you ask me, my brother, I've been living in the year 1968 for the last three years working on that right there, okay? Now, this might sound strange, but I'm gonna tell you how real this is for me. I'm a very specific and visual person. The clubs that I've been to have been crazy. Mm -hmm. You wanna know who's been in my section? Yo. Marvin Gaye. Man, he said some shit last night that was so crazy. We was at the, we was at the table dying laugh. Marvin funny as a motherfucker, man, he crazy. Uh, Donnie Hathaway pulled up last night. Uh, man, Billie Holiday, Frankie Beverly and Mays, Luther was there, Michael Jackson was there. Still can't believe they let that little nigga in the club. <laughs> uh, he still looks like a kid. Uh, you see, you, did, you, did you see the pivot? Mm -hmm. That's where I've been in my mind. I don't even know who the fuck Lil Tay Tay is. <laughs> I don't know nothing about no YouTube. I don't know nothing about iTunes. I don't know nothing about nothing. I have been in the world of beautiful pain, tapping into songs in the key of life and all of the icons and legends that my mama, rest in peace. R&B soul music in my house was the soundtrack to her alcoholism. Yeah. I love R&B soul music, but all these R&B niggas from that era had my mama drunk as a motherfucker. <laughs> I don't even think my mama would have drunk as much as she drunk on her own if she had just sat there and said, let me just have a couple. But you put that thing on mm -hmm. in that background, that Marvin Gaye, that Teddy Pendergrass, that Luther, the OJs, Donny Hathaway, the soundtrack of your addiction. That's where my brain was at. And that's why Beautiful Pain, produced by my brother Brandon Bam Hodge, an executive produced by someone who came out of retirement to do this, David Foster. Wow. Let me give you a couple names that's okay. gonna put the kids to sleep. Can we put the kids to sleep real quick? Sure. Elder Barge. Wow. Lenny Kravitz. Kenny G. Oh, they definitely gonna go to sleep now. Kenny G is on the album. Tamar Braxton. Every song on this album is live. Live strings. Now, here's the thing. I got songs on this album that's almost eight minutes long. Did them niggas tell Luther Vandross to send in a radio edit? You know, you know, Luther Vandross has songs that had like four minute intro before the verse start. I want to tell you, baby, the chances I've been going through, missing you, missing you. Oh. I ran out of breath because of your nose, nigga. Until <laughs> you come back to me, I, I don't, shit. I don't, shit. <laughs> I'm just playing. Anyway, anyway. Listen, man. There was no such thing. Here's all the old folks, okay? I'm 45. I'm talking to grown folk. Lil Tay Tay, Lil Ray Ray, Lil JJ, all the niggas out here upload TikTok videos, painting your fingernails black and doing turquoise hair and announcing that you're a homosexual, trying to fit into the community because it's going to make you more in. I got it. If you live in a particular lifestyle, I literally don't have a racist bone. I don't discriminate. I just say do what makes you happy. But I'm going to tell y'all, for us folks that grew up on true R&B soul music, 
I got some bad news for y'all. There was never Luther Vandross featuring Curtis Blow. There was never Marvin Gaye featuring the Sugar Hill Gang. I've been really trying, baby. Trying to hold back in feelings for so long. Trying to hold back in feelings for so long. Put that pussy on the ground, girl, it's so strong. <laughs> it did not happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. It, it, it just did not happen. There was a, there was a specific R&B soul that had nothing to do with coexisting with hip hop. Y'all may not know that. You may not know that. Even James Brown. Mm -hmm. Godfather. You ever heard of James Brown, boys and girls? Okay, even James Brown, legend. First black man to ever own his own private plane. Correct. The most sampled R&B soul godfather in the history of hip hop. Never had one rapper on his goddamn song. Hip hop has sampled an R&B soul godfather and yet the godfather himself never said yes to hip hop. R&B is insecure right now. They won't even play it on the radio unless it features a rapper. Until now. You're going to have to pull them instruments out. That dusty ass road keyboard in your garage with the organ. Them instruments is coming out. It's all live instrumentation on here. God willing, if we come home with 10 Grammys, it's going to be niggas out here asking some hard questions. They, they out here up, they're up here making beats on iPhones on an, on an airplane using Wi-Fi. And by the time they land, it's on the side cloud and it goes viral and they up here tick tocking to it. You can't tell anybody to sing real love songs no more. No one wants to beg. No one wants to plead. No one wants to express love and sentiments about nothing. Everybody is selling lonely. Fuck you. I don't need you. To the left, to the left. Pack your shit. Get out. Well, that's not what that is. Now, the divorce for transparency motivated me to get in the studio to make that. But it's called beautiful pain. And I'm speaking of the pain, but more importantly, I'm, I'm talking about the beauty that I discovered in my pain. Wow. And I've mainly, are you married yet, Shannon? No. Okay. I have mainly played this album for married couples. Why? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I've mainly played this album for married couples. Because my love for the Lord Jesus Christ would never, ever allow for me to release an album to contribute to the divorce rate. Imagine me taking my pains, my traumas, and my strife from this unexpected divorce, and then I release a whole album going at divorces, going at the sanctuary of marriage, going at love. Now, my ex is gonna get this work, Nick. Ah! <laughs> my ex is gonna get this work. There's songs like Love Transacts where I say 20,000 isn't child support. We both know just who that money for. That might make you feel a way. 20,000 ain't shit compared to what other niggas get hit with. There's people out here with six, seven kids. Ask them what that number is per month. This shit real. Mm -hmm. However, don't confuse my truth with the truth. That's one. And two. And two is why are you making me feel bad about me singing these songs and these lyrics when that's actually something I feel, felt, and experienced? All of a sudden, when a man released a, a, a song talking about his marriage falling apart or whatever specifics and details that come along with it, I'm misogynistic and I'm being condescending towards women. You ain't say that shit to Mary J. Blige. You ain't say that shit to Jasmine Sullivan when she said, I'm going to bust the windows out of your car. You had your ass in the, in the arena looking for a window to bust out a car. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. So at the end of the day, Beautiful pain can be ordered 
online exclusively at Tyrese.tv. I'm independent, Shannon. Don't, don't edit that out. Tyrese.tv is the only place in the world you can buy Beautiful Pain. It's a double vinyl. If you skip a song, I quit. Wow. Literally, when you put the needle on the vinyl, the album starts off with the, with the sound of vinyl. The little crackling sound, that's how the album starts, and you just let it play. Put your kids to sleep, get their homework done, tell them niggas to turn off the video game and get ready for school, because mama and daddy about to make your brother and sister. <laughs> wow. You gonna get your ass dropped off at the carpool lane, and this album is gonna bring love back into your mommy and daddy's marriage that may have been fading away. It's gonna have us sitting across from the dinner table flirting again, making love again. Not fucking, fucking is cool. Twerking and fucking, That's it. we got enough of that. <laughs> we just seen the whole BET Awards with niggas twerking. I'm yeah. sitting there on the front row like, God damn, I'm 45 years old, I'm sitting next to some valuable booty meat. That's way too much booty meat on this goddamn stage. <laughs> They've normalized the ratchet. Right. And they want us to think it's okay to be that. No disrespect to none of the artists. This is different. This is, this is intimate. This is vulnerable. It's getting back to being grown. And I don't want no youngsters in my audience. How old are you, Shannon? If you don't mind me asking. 56. You're 56, I'm 45. You know how uncomfortable it would be for me at 45 years old to see a 16-year-old in my audience with turquoise hair uploading a TikTok video to my damn music? And I'm not going to kick him out because he's 16, but this ain't for you. Take your ass to bed. Go get your homework done, turn your video game off, get off of Instagram and Snapchat, go to sleep because I'm dropping you off in the carpool lane tomorrow and I'm going home and me and your mama are gonna keep dancing in the living room and we're gonna figure out a way to fall in love over and over again because she has lost sight of how important our marriage is since we didn't have four kids. This gonna bring them back together. Beautiful Pain drops August 30th along with this movie 1992, Tyrese Gibson. Cheers. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.